Well, he hello and welcome to this webinar uh, on the MSc University Conservation Programme at Bournemouth University. My name is Roger Herbert, I'm Programme Leader. I'm a marine biologist that teach across the, the programme. So the MSc is taught by staff in the Department of Life and Environmental Sciences, which is within the Faculty of Science and Technology. It's uh, very much an international staff with international research um, and of course we have international students as well as uh, UK students. Because of the international research there are international opportunities for study uh, in all sorts of different fields and different subject areas within the discipline. The department has very close links with the archaeology and forensic science staff who are also located within the, the uh, science and technology faculty. So at the heart of Bournemouth University's philosophy is a fusion of learning, research and professional practice. So what that means for you as a student is that your learning isn't just straight out of the textbook, you will have opportunities to actually engage in the research with the staff as well as be involved with any professional activities, perhaps for conservation agencies, environmental organisations that we work with locally, regionally, and nationally. So, this map just illustrates the breadth of our research across all continents, all areas of biodiversity, conservation, all the different habitats and ecosystems, um, forests to aquatic work, uh, work in the Arctic tundra as well as uh, in the tropics. Not forgetting of course our terrific location here in Dorset on the south coast of England, uh, a biodiversity hotspot in the UK, a broad range of habitats from terrestrial, aquatic, marine ecosystems right on our doorstep. Uh, we have the New Forest National Park, which is of international significance within a short drive of the university. West of the university, we have Pool Harbour and the Jurassic Coast, famous for a wide variety of cliff top habitats as well as intertidal and marine systems. So at the university we are equipped for the outdoors as well as obviously for indoor work in laboratories and search labs. Our main laboratory is the great outdoors so I'll come on to talk about field work shortly but within the university itself we have a wide range of teaching laboratories as well as GIS labs and um, traditional science laboratories. We also have a very good store of equipment, a wide range of surveying kit which students can book out for their own research projects and dissertations. So the course programme uh, is, I guess, centred around three main areas. Uh, we obviously encourage you to develop your understanding of ecosystems and communities, as well as obviously considering impacts of invasive species and broader, broad scale impacts of climate change, of course, which is affecting all the systems. But how do we actually go about predicting the severity and location of impacts well we use a variety of approaches from remote sensing to individual based modeling which you will uh, be exposed to and encourage you to develop skills within the course. In addition we're very concerned and interested in uh, society's perception of ecology but also the valuation of ecosystems and habitats by people and by industry. So 
of the importance of ecosystem approaches and the valuation of ecosystem services is incorporated in that program. So the program is divided up into different units. So there are six core units, so everybody has to complete all six core units and two option units. So there is currently a choice of four option units and these are delivered in the second semester, so from February onwards. And students also have to complete a dissertation research project and a professional placement of 30 days duration. So the core units uh, are um, designed to equip you with the skills and knowledge you'll need should you wish to pursue a career in conservation or indeed go into research. So a unit frontiers in biodiversity science is what it says. It, it's looking at the current issues pertaining to biodiversity conservation globally and looking at the current literature, helping you to evaluate the literature, help you to come to opinions on different issues which are at the forefront of the subject area. The unit conservation in practice is uh, a much more practical, hands-on approach to the subject area. There are field days associated with this unit which encourages you to evaluate practice within the profession of biodiversity conservation. So considering management approaches, different management approaches, evaluating those, uh, evaluating management plans for the different habitats in different parts of the world. The unit field ecology skills encourages you to develop identification skills. The, this skill is particularly weak globally, um, but and so there is a need for graduates to have that skill to be able to work in the field as well as in the laboratory. Additionally, the unit has a field course uh, in May time. This is non-residential, although there is an optional residential component. And on that field course, we would take different issues in conservation biology and considering different approaches to address those issues. So these might be concerned with bird breeding capabilities, uh, translocating orchids, uh, looking at mapping approaches in different habitats. The unit quantitative and spatial analysis uh, is concerned with the development of statistical approaches to the analysis of data and also mapping digital data using geographical information systems. So those two uh, elements are developed during that unit. The research project is 60 credits. So this is a very, very important part of the programme and the research project is developed with your supervisor and is normally taken or carried out over the summer. So you would choose two option units in semester two. Quite a wide range. You can develop your statistical skills and modelling skills in the unit advanced quantitative methods. Genetics is becoming increasingly important in biodiversity conservation. This is both a theoretical and a practical unit, so you will be um, undertaking some, some laboratory work in that unit. International law of the environment considers policy and 
legislation, not just in the UK, but globally. The unit, the unit uh, Climate Behaviour and Ecology, uh, is very much uh, an interest of one of our staff and uh, who's working in tropical environments. Uh, and there are considerable study opportunities within that program. The Unit Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services is actually delivered remotely, so you don't actually have to be on campus. Uh, there are assignments which can be completed, should you choose to, on a weekly basis rather than at the end of the programme. So there are different uh, tasks to be undertaken frequently during the delivery. As well as that remote option in semester two, there are a variety of other forms of delivery and assessment, including presentations, field and lab reports, I mentioned the design of a management plan. Another assignment will ask you to propose a practical research project or a practical management task, which should be costed out. And then of course the identification and field observation skills are assessed uh, in a rather novel way, uh, having a staff mentor to help you develop those skills during a two to three month duration. In addition to taught seminars and practicals on campus, all units will require reading and independent study. We try and ensure that the timetable is as efficient as possible so that it's not strung out across the week but is focused on particular days during the week where you're on campus and the remainder of the time is there for independent study. You should commence your preparation of your research proposal quite early on in semester one where you would seek out a supervisor who will help you develop your interests in your proposal. The research project uh, is 60 credits. It can be uh, a field project or it can be laboratory based. You will get staff supervisory support and you will also be able to use a wide range of equipment. Currently the unit is assessed by, a, by the submission of a journal article. This is not submitted for publication but is just written in the style of a journal article which is developed with your supervisor. All students have to undertake a mandatory professional placement. So this could be an organisation locally or it could be an or with an organisation or a company overseas. All students have to complete 30 days, so that could be done on block with a single provider or you might choose to actually spread that, those 30 days, over different providers. However, the minimum number of days with any one organisation is 10 days. At the end of that 30 day period, you would provide a reflection on your experience and receive a reference from your provider. You have a placement tutor and we in the department have support for all those going on placements. Across the programme there are different opportunities for field work. Within the unit field ecology skills, which is a non-residential field course 
you would expect to have five full days of taught field work. In addition to that unit, then there are other taught field days, particularly within the unit cultivation and practice. Depending on which option units you take and choose, there will be additional field work over and above those nine days. Of course, there is also laboratory work either in the science lab or in the computer labs where you develop your statistical and IT skills and mapping skills using GIS software. There may also be additional visits to showcase projects um, throughout the programme depending on which units you want to. Thank you for joining me on this webinar. Should you have any questions, do contact the university or contact me directly as a programme leader.